This problem is a cooling problem where we have a boiled potato starting at 91 degrees Celsius at t equals zero, and it cools with the differential equation of the change in heat or temperature is negative one quarter h minus 27. So we have this differential equation that's going to allow us to calculate slope, and we have initial condition of zero and 91. So we want to find a tangent line, and we want to use this tangent line to approximate the temperature at t equals 3. So we need to find the tangent line at t equals 0. So we want the slope at t equals 0. In this case, since the dh by dt, the slope, the rate at which it cools, is given to us in terms of h, we need to know that the h value is equal to 91 degrees Celsius. So calculating dh by dt, for t is 0, h is 91, plugging that into our differential equation, we get 91 minus 27. And calculating that out, 91 minus 27 gives us 64 over 4, so negative 16, and this is going to be degrees Celsius per, looks like, minute. Okay, so once we have that the slope, we can now put it into our differential or tangent line equation. And our tangent line equation is going to be y equals, we need our slope, so negative 16. We need a coordinate at x is 0 and y is 91. Okay, so there's our tangent line equation. And then we're going to use this tangent line equation to calculate the, the, or to estimate the internal temperature at t equals 3. Okay, or well in this case it would be x equals 3. I'll make that into an x. x equals 3. So to calculate that we get negative 16 times 3 plus 91. So the internal temperature works out to be negative 48 plus 91 that looks like it's going to be 43 degrees celsius okay so that's the first part we're using this tangent line to approximate the the value on the curve so the second part says use d squared d squared h over dt squared to determine whether you answer in part a is an under or overestimate of the internal temperature. Well, there's a couple keys here. So when we're differentiating differential, implicit differential equations, we need to make sure we're applying the chain rule as we differentiate. Okay, so we're gonna first do that to for, work out the second derivative. So our first derivative, if we recall, was negative four h minus 27. So Differentiating this, so d squared h over dt squared is going to give us the slope of that of that function. Okay, so we have negative one quarter is our slope, but since h is an embedded function, we need to make sure we apply chain rule. So as we apply the chain rule on that h, we get dh by dt. So this is applying the chain rule. I'm just going to highlight that because that is differentiating. That is the derivative that we need to apply as we differentiate h. So we have the slope first, and then the h is embedded, so we apply chain rule in this case. So then rewriting this equation, we end up with negative 1 over 4 times the dh by dt was the original function, negative 1 over 4 h minus 27 okay, and that represents our dh by dt from the chain rule and then we can calculate the <coughs> we can calculate the concavity so d squared h over dt at h equals 91 we're going to work that out it's going to be 16 1 over 16 91 minus 27 
Okay, so 91 minus 27, that worked out to be 64. 64 divided by 4 is positive 4. So what that means then is, is our concavity here is positive 4. So the fact that it's positive, if we take a look at this value here, the curve, rep, black curve, represents the actual equation. And the, the dh, d squared by, if it's, if the d squared h by dt is positive, we have concave up situation. And that means that a linear approximation will always be below. So that linear approximation is going to end up being an underestimate in this case. So because it's positive, the d squared h over dt squared equals positive, it is an underestimate. Looking at the mark scheme, for question number one, we, for this, we get one mark for the slope, one mark for a tangent line, and one mark for the approximation. And for question number B, it's an underestimate with some kind of justification. You could draw a picture. You can just say, state the concavity, and that will justify the underestimate.